Hello and welcome to this recap of today's Code Buddies live coding session. Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer to peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. In today's session, we continued working on our musical geometry experiments. We added a new shape, this musical Tannenbaum, in the spirit of the season and the ability to change the way it sounds. So let's take a quick look how this works. You can interact with the tree by clicking it. And then you can change the way the synthesizer plays. We have four waveforms to choose from. Sine wave, square and sawtooth. Let's take now a look at how the SVG was created and then the code to make the sounds happen. We'll go over here to Inkscape. And the cool thing about this approach is you can really create any kind of interface uh, that you can imagine very intuitively just by using an illustrative program. We're using Inkscape because it's open source and also very capable. And in particular, we need um, to be able to edit the SVG source code so we can add some annotations. So here we just created some basic shapes. And for each of those shapes, I add these attributes. Class, to indicate that it's a note, because we're not playing chords in this session. And the data attribute, notes, which in this case is a B flat. There's only one note playing here um, in all of these, even though notes is plural. That means we can actually create chords by putting multiple notes in this same attribute. The same was done for each of the other attributes. We created class note and then told it what note to play when the user clicks on it. Very cool. So that's the Inkscape code. Let's take a quick look now at the changes we made to the Tonnets project today. By the way, the code is on GitHub, it's open source, and we're deploying it now, the latest version, everything that lands in master branch gets deployed so you can try this at home. I'll add a link to that in the show notes and in the URL here so you can find it easily. So the main, uh, well, the first change we made today was just to move all the JavaScript to its own file. That keeps our HTML a little cleaner. Um, then we obviously switched in our Tenenbaum SVG. We were experimenting last time with a circle of keys and uh, we had previously created a star with some um, notes around it. Um, and we added this select widget so that you can change the tone of the oscillator. And when you select one, it's going to call this JavaScript function to change the synthesis sizer waveform, or the oscillator waveform, I suppose, I can be consistent with the way I name things across the code base. That makes it easier to read. So uh, what we have here, how the code is basically working, in case you haven't seen the previous session, um, we're using this tone.js library, which is really cool. It has quite a lot it can do, including um, playing, provides various uh, instrument types and audio sources, it can do effects, and I don't know what all these are, equalizing, crossfading, filtering, getting a Fourier transform so you can view the constituent parts, low frequency oscillator, frequency oscillators, there's a lot. We haven't even scratched the surface, it looks like this uh, can do so much. So what we do is we've just created a polyphonic synthesizer, which means it can play multiple notes at the same time, multiple voices, up to four voices. And each of those voices is, I think, an instance of this tone synth, um, which is one of these mod uh, modules here. Base class for all other classes. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not it. Tone synth. In any case, let's just go through the code and to quite want to walk through the tone.js documentation. <laughs> so we grab, we're calling this Tonnets uh, for historic reasons, but now it's a Christmas tree. Uh, so we just get that Christmas tree element, and we also get a reference to this 
oscillator waveform select widget so that we can um, get the value of that later. And essentially, when this Christmas tree has loaded into the UI, we want to make it musical. So we get the SVG by using the element. Uh, this is a this is an embed uh, object. We were previously using an iframe, and it was making things difficult. So we switched away from the iframe here. In particular, this uh, dropdown wouldn't render, it wouldn't open when the iframe was there. It was like overlapping or some weirdness. So we had to change the code. And this is actually a little cleaner and more explicit. So we have a reference to the embed, and we get the SVG document, and pass it into these event listening uh, that make it musical, these uh, functions to make it musical. We get all the notes, all of those attributes, all of those entities in here in the SVG that have a class of dot of note, not dot note, this means class, but just a class of note. And for each of those, we listen for the mouse up and down, uh, down and up, sorry, when you click and when you release. Um, I learned that this isn't quite working as expected for touch events, so another thing we'll have to do later is uh, see how to make it intuitive for people on tablet devices, which is actually the end goal here. Uh, that you can use multiple fingers and play multiple notes and chords and things like that. Uh, but in any case, when we click, we want to play a note, and when we let up on the mouse button, we want to release that note. So that way you can control the length of the note, the duration of the note as well. And essentially, we when we're playing the note, we want to just look at that notes attribute in the, the data dash notes attribute in the element and play the note. Here, this number four represents the octave. Um, we're going to have to experiment with different ways of letting people try um, to play across the octaves. Fortunately, Tenenbaum or O Christmas Tree uh, is just in one octave, so I could hard code it here, but this is not an ideal setup in the long run. And the same thing happens when you stop the note, you just have to give it the same note data so that the, synth, the polysynth can turn off that note. Great, so we didn't really work with chords, but they basically work the same way. And you can review this code on GitHub. The other main um, function here is how do we let the synth know that we want it to play a different voice, a different waveform. So, when we wired up this event listener on change, the change synth waveform, we pass in the select object. And inside of there, we can get the value that is currently selected. And polysynth has a method that lets you set um, metadata attributes on the individual synthesizer instances. So you can put like filters or, let's see if I can find the docs over here. This polysynth set. Here we are. You can just pass in a bunch of parameters. Uh, you can apply filters or change the envelope, ADSR, attack to decay, sustain, release, uh, all sorts of cool things. We just wanted to change the oscillator type. Uh, this I didn't find a way this was explicitly documented, but fortunately it's fairly obvious the way the uh, properties are organized, and I could just guess that oscillator and that type, and then set the oscillator type. And that's it. It um, pretty, went, pretty well went smoothly today. I uh, didn't have any major difficulties. Uh, just kind of a relaxing session. Um, trying out some experimental music, musical interfaces. So again, this has been a Code Buddies Hangout. Um, Code Buddies is quite an active community, quite diverse. There are people studying all sorts of uh, technologies. Everybody is able to teach and learn. If you're wanting to get involved, if you wanted to build a portfolio or learn a new technology, I highly recommend uh, stopping by codebuddies.org. The platform itself is open source, and we're currently uh, developing the next generation of the codebuddies.org platform using various technologies. We haven't settled on one yet, so there's a chance to get involved at the ground level of a new open source project. All right, well, thanks again for watching this Code Buddies recap, and have a great day.